today. We come into your presence and we ask, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to move and minister as you desire to do upon each and every one of us. Your will be done, we pray, oh God, today. We lift up every need and every request. Lord, we especially cry out for Israel today. We pray, God, that you would move and minister upon your people. Father, we pray for those in harm's way. We pray, God, that you would give protection and that, Lord, you would bring about the defeat of their enemies yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. And we pray, Lord, for our men and women who are in harm's way. And we pray, God, that you would keep them in safety and protection. And, Father, we lift up every need across this congregation. Lord, those that are not feeling well, those that are sick in body, we pray, God, that you would move and minister. We pray for Augusta. We pray, God, that you would minister to her, touch her, and bring healing. We pray, God, that you would minister to Miss Jerry's uh, sister, Lord, that you would move and minister and touch her. We pray for Karen Norman. We pray, God, that you'd continue to undergird her and touch her and bring healing today. We thank you for what you're going to do. We pray for Bill. We pray, God, that you'd continue to minister healing in him. For Scott, God, touch him. For Jason, Lord, move and minister by the power of your Holy Spirit. For Don Slayton, God, we pray that, that you would touch him and bring healing in him. 
We thank you for Miss Esther, and we lift her up to you, and we pray, God, that you would touch her mightily in this hour. We thank you for all that you're going to do. We give you praise and glory. Lord, our prayer is today that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Have your way, O oh God, today. We bless you. We thank you. We worship you, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen.
talk to you about looking for God among the rubble. And I want you to look at your life and realize that most of our lives are full of rubble. Um, there's a young lady named Ashley Barker, five-year-old from Patterson, Georgia, who, looking at her, thinks she's a normal child. Yeah. But she's, but she's far from normal due to a genetic disorder she is incapable of sensing pain no matter how hot or cold outside it is her body can't register the need to cool itself or the lack of heat it's a serious condition that affects her whole life when she falls off a swing at the school playground, bloodies her knees, she doesn't cry because she doesn't feel pain. When she spoons a hot spoonful of soup in your mouth and you and I know we, ooh, we burn our tongue, she doesn't know it because she can't sense pain. Her mother says, some people say that that would be a great living, feeling no pain. But no, it's not. Pain's there for a reason. Ashley's mother says it lets your body know something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. I would give anything for her to be able to feel pain. Whether we realize it or not, pain is a gift from God. God allows us to feel pain for a purpose. The ability to feel pain is a gift. This morning as you count 
count your blessings, I encourage you to thank God for the pain in your life. First of all, because you have the sensitivity to feel it and to react to it. Second, because of what that pain in your life causes you to do. The hardships in our life crowds us to the one who alone can embrace our sorrows. Due to pain, both emotionally, physically, psychologically, we're pushed to acknowledge that there has to be someone who is above and beyond our circumstances. I don't know if many of you, those of you that are around my age probably will remember this man. His name is Andre Crouch. Loved his music. Um, he lived in Southern California. And during the San Fernando Valley earthquake in 1971, a 6.5 tremor caused extensive damage and loss of life. <coughs> he wrote a song about that. It became a hit. The second verse to the song, Through It All, goes like this. I thank God for the mountains. I thank God for the valleys. I thank God for the storms he's brought me through. If I'd never had a problem, I'd never know that he could solve them. I'd never know what faith in his word could do. Wow. When you look at life that way and realize, you know what? We, we all endure pain. We all have things. We all have stuff. We all have rubble. And yet through it all, God has been faithful. You know, when we were singing that song, the goodness of God, he's not just good on the mountaintops. He's good in the valley. Amen. About a century before Andre Crouch wrote his song, another Swedish songwriter Augusta Storm penned these words. Thanks to God, my Redeemer. Thanks for all thou dost provide. Thanks for times now but a memory. Thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant, balmy springtime. Thanks for dark and stormy fall. Thanks for tears by now forgotten. Thanks for peace within my soul. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered. Thanks for well, what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for home and thanks for fireside. Thanks for hope, that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace with thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks through all eternity. Wow. You know, the writer says, for everything there is a season. There's a time. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. There's a time for joy. There's a time for pain. And that's true of this life. And we, we have to understand that, that pain is a gift. Because if we didn't feel the pain, if we didn't know what pain was, how would we know what God could do? Not only is pain a gift, it's pain is inevitable. Because you see, this fact that Jesus has given to us abundant life in this world, we have to remember we have to live in this world 
and it's imperfect. It's flawed by sin. This world is marked by endless evidences of decay, death, tragedy, sorrow. There's a song that celebrates both. The inevitability of pain and the heartache in our world and the unchangeable quality of God's control. Psalm 46 is such an appropriate psalm. I want you to listen to these words, and this is out of the New Living Translation of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city and it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. And I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. These words, some 3,000 years old, are amazing and timeless today. Natural disasters, wars, the instability of our world, the lack of peace, those things that we are concerned about even in the this day of terrorism, of rebel extremists, part of the morality that is infected in this world in which we live. And we are not exempt from pain and suffering or premeditated tragedy. In case you haven't found out yet, the hard drive of your life doesn't have to download troubles. It comes pre-installed. That's what the psalmist acknowledges as he begins the psalm in verse 1. I love that verse. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of These times that we now find ourselves in are not the exception. They're the rule. The real punch of this verse is not found in the last four words. The punch is found in the first four words. God is our refuge. No matter how bad things seem, no matter how bad things get, no matter how insecure we feel, no matter what's happening, our hope is in God. And not just that He is, but it's what He is. He's our refuge and strength. He's always ready to help us. I want you to do something with me this morning. Would you just repeat with me? God is our refuge and strength. God is our refuge and strength. Say it one more time. God is our refuge and strength. Now say this. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Say it one more time. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Who is? God. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our hope in a hopeless world. 
We all have difficulties. We all have trouble. We all have those things that happen all around us. But God. But God. Pastor, you don't know what I'm going through. But God. But you don't know the pain I'm... But God. You don't know how hopeless I, but God. I can't even sit here today and tell you how I would have felt about a story that I read this week that happened last Saturday, a week ago yesterday. When a young Israeli family saw Rebels coming in and they took their two 10-month-old children and put them in a safe room in their house. Both of them being retired from the, the military, locked them in there and they set to defend their house. And when they came in, they killed seven of the rebels before they themselves were killed. Later, his father and brother came and found them. The children were safe. I can't even begin to imagine how that must feel. And while I've never faced that, you and I have faced things. And I don't know what we may have to face before Jesus comes. But God. Because you see, even if I trust him, even to believe upon him, even if they take this life, they can't take ours. Because I know in whom I have believed. And I know that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. My hope is in Jesus. I can't promise to you that you will never have to go through trouble. I can't promise to you that you will never have to endure hardship. I can't promise to you that you will never have to face death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Pain has a purpose. You know, I never really thought about it like I have in the last few days. And I went back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 3, and it makes sense. Sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. Now, yes, laughter doeth good like a medicine, and not a whole lot rather laugh than cry. So don't misunderstand that. But I also know the greatest learning times of my life have been the hardest times of my life. Sorrow and sadness has an influence on our lives. The pain that we've gone through has an ability to perfect in us a character that God's trying to develop in each and every one of us. While pain is a gift and it is inevitable, we also have to understand that pain is still pain. <laughs> but God is still God. <coughs> In spite of the way that pain refines us and calls attention to our need of a refuge, pain is still pain. Earthquakes still kill, volcanoes kill, wars and destruction happen, families Families of sons whose lives have only just begun. Jeremiah's perspective in Lamentations is a realistic one. Listen to these words in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19. The thought of my suffering and homeless, homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. The beauty of Psalm 46 is that it doesn't just ignore the pain that's in this world. 
the inevitable adversity that comes to all of us, but it also won't let us forget that we aren't alone in our struggles or in our suffering. Martin Luther wrote in his timeless hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. He wrote these words, and through and though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us. You've been booby-trapped by this world. Some of you may feel threatened at this time. Some of you may feel loss of life. Some of you may feel the loss that you suffered through this life. Don't deny it. I'll never forget when David passed away. And I know we're not the only parents that have gone through that. There are many others. But there's a hole that it leaves. And that hole never goes away. And I'll never forget Jonathan was, we were all sitting in our living room one evening. And Jonathan made this statement. And I've used it so many times because it is so true. He said, you know, it's okay not to be okay. There are times in this life we're not okay. But God is still God. He's never left us. He's never failed us. In spite of what this looks like, there's more than meets the eye. Because Martin Luther went on to say, those, remember those words I just said, and Though this world, the devil's field, should threaten to undo us, he goes on to say, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. That's the truth. Even if we are injured, even if we are left homeless, even if we are killed, our faithful God will shelter us in his mercy. Listen to Lamentations chapter 3, beginning verse 19, that says, The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercy never ceases. Great is His faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who depend on Him, to those who search for Him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. And it's good for people to submit to an early age in the yoke of his dis discipline. Let them sit alone in silence beneath the Lord's demands. Let them lie face down in the dust, for there may be hope at last. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept the insults of their enemies, for no one is abandoned by the Lord forever. Notice how the passage lays it out. There's bad. There's good. But it all comes down to the fact that the good will ultimately outweigh the bad because God is our refuge. As he concludes his ten candid testimony of his life and faith, the psalmist recalls and calls to us to be still and to contemplate God. I want you to do that today. Because you see in Psalm 46.10, he says, Be still. You know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation and I will be honored throughout the world. There are times in our lives when it's difficult to be still. 
There are times when we're when we're antsy, when we're frantic, when we feel like there's got. And yet God's saying, You won't rest? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, true rest comes when we come into that yoke, that bondship, that relationship with Jesus Christ that says, you know what? No matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm going through, whether it's the mountaintop or whether it's the floor of the deepest, darkest death valley I've ever traveled, you're with me. And my hope rests in you. Remember the words the psalmist begins with. God is our refuge and strength. Always ready to help in times of trouble. Sometimes I feel alone. Sometimes I feel like I'm all by myself. But then I realize I'm not. He's holding me in his right hand of righteousness. And no matter what is going on, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what happens in this life, I'm his. He is mine. His strength. His strength. His strength. When I talk about the grace of God, you got to understand. When I say the grace of God is sufficient, it, it's not just that, well, okay, okay. I, it, it, but it's His presence. His grace that has given me the ability to overcome regardless of the circumstances, even when I don't feel like I'm okay, even when I feel like all the rubble in my life is about to drown me. He is my strength. And the devil's a liar. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Yes. You're not going to die. Even if this flesh fails me, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live forever. And the best Yet to come. Woo! The best is yet to come. You think I look good now? Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Mm hmm. I could take that further, but I'm just going to let it go. Where is God in the rubble of your life? Maybe this morning we just need to be still. And see him. Would you bow your head with me?
never gone through the valley, if I'd never gone through disappointment, if I'd never gone through failure, I wouldn't understand what all you could do. But Lord, through it all, you have been faithful. Minister to our hearts, to our minds, to our lives, to this hour. Help us to be still. Help us to know that you are God. You alone help us, Lord. As Paul said to the Thessalonians, Lord, in everything give thanks. Not just the good times. But in the rubble of my life, I thank you. You're still God. Thank you. For your blessings. For your strength. For being that refuge that we can run to. We can rest in. That old song said, He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock. Thank you, Lord, for that refuge. God, have your way in each of us. Your will be done on earth, in our lives, in our circumstances. It's your will in us. Thank you, Lord, that you have been faithful to this point. Even at times when we were not faithful, you were faithful because you cannot deny who you are. Thank you for your faithfulness. And that you will be faithful all the way through. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me share with you the proverb of the week. It's the first slide. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Do not be afraid of sudden terror. Nor are trouble when the wicked of the wicked from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Thank you, Jesus. He's faithful. He's faithful. Remember all the things of this week. Uh, our service next Sunday will be very much in prayer. Um, November the 11th. Five, five thirty. Rick, five. We're all invited down to Rick and Glenna Penn's home. They're going to fix us a seven course <laughs> meal. No, as a matter of fact, we're going to have a, a, a bonfire. We're going to do 
s'mores and marshmallows and uh, things like that. So five o'clock. Bring a chair. Provided it's not raining, if it's raining, you better bring an umbrella. <laughs> no, if it's raining, we won't be doing it. We'll do it some other time. But uh, on the 11th of November, which is the second Saturday of November, 5 o'clock, Rick and Glenda's home. If you need information on where they live, we can get that to you. Um, yeah, it's easy to find right down 311, right down Main Street. Uh, and uh, we're going to be there at 5 o'clock, so come and just have, let's have a time of fellowship together and just enjoy uh, the evening and celebrate and just, just have some good fellowship together. Um, um, hopefully it'll be cold enough that the fire will feel good. So uh, that's on the 11th, so remember that. Um, are you ready? What do you think? Maybe. We got something we want to share with you. Oh, and I didn't do, yeah, I did forget that. Let's turn that up. There's a sound with that. I think it has to be turned up on the sound. And I'm convinced of this because I know you. All you are capable of. This is the truth. If you turn things upside down, you can't hope for your life to change. I would be lying to you if I said that you have a great future ahead. <coughs> that you can recover from your past mistakes. That your life could be filled with joy. That your children could be safe and healthy. More than anything, you must know human beings cannot accomplish these things. And I'm convinced of this because I know you. All you are capable of is failure. You have made a complete mess of your life, and I refuse to believe under any circumstances that you can turn things around in the coming years. You may think your life is bad now, but there's more to come. You have only one destiny, and whether you like it or not, this is what is real. I am the Lord your God. You should know I believe exactly the opposite. I am the Lord your God. This is what is real. And whether you like it or not, you have only one destiny. There's more to come. You may think your life is bad now, but you can turn things around in the coming years. I refuse to believe under any circumstances that you have made a complete mess of your life and all you are capable of is failure. And I'm convinced of this because I know you. Human beings cannot accomplish these things. More than anything, you must know that your children could be safe and healthy that your life could be filled with joy, that you can recover from your past mistakes. You have a great future ahead. I would be lying to you if I said that you can't hope for your life to change. If you turn things upside down, this is the truth.
Thank you, Jesus. We want to share something with you um, before we let you go. Take me a minute to get ready. Um, I what if you want to say to everybody? Hello, this is Leslie. I miss church so much. I just wanted to say something to the church people and tell them to not miss them. I love them so much. And for them to continue to pray for me. I'm doing fine. I may never really best care of the impact you give. That's my children. And I love them so much and they love me. And I love you church people all. Everybody. Tell everybody I said I hello and that I love them. And I miss so much being in church. Yep. That was last minute walking out the door. Mama says, Tell everybody, I said, You tell. That was the message from Ms. Esther. Remember to pray. Pray for her, pray for Israel. Um, as I've said, I don't necessarily believe this is the end, so don't misunderstand me. I do believe. We need to pray because this thing can spiral quickly into a whole lot bigger thing than you and I even think of at this moment. So we just need to pray and uh, pray that God, uh, God's will be accomplished, definitely. But uh, that he will protect and keep us all. Would you stand with us? November the 11th, 5 o'clock. Bring a coat hanger. I know some of you got them real fancy things. You can bring them too, but I was raised on coat hangers or green sticks. Um, but anyway, whatever. Um, you can't use the plastic ones. <laughs> Lord. You know the Lord loves you. Before you leave today, turn to somebody and say, I just want you to know the truth. The truth is, I'm hungry and I'm living with somebody to take me to lunch. Lord bless you. We'll see you this week. Right. <laughs> 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 I just saw your text pictures sitting in there. Really? Like you said it Thursday? Yeah. <laughs>